Um, what do you think the legislation tells the UT system to do at this point? It's all right to prepare, to plan, and to get ready to go to the accreditation process to do everything necessary to create a medical school after the year 2015. So uh, I, I, think, I think we're on the right track here. The next couple of sessions uh, we will use to make sure we, we address whatever necessary steps that, that have to take place uh, to be able to reach this goal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, with the leadership uh, at the UT system, especially my good friend, uh, Chancellor Sigoroa, who was president of the Health Science Center in San Antonio. And I understand the new president hopefully will be uh, President uh, Dr. Henrich, who I have a great deal of respect for as well. Uh, the Board of Regents and the makeup of the Board of Regents gives me great hope that we, we have the men and women who understand and appreciate South Texas and the needs of South Texas. All of this coming together along with the legislature points to nothing but, um, you know, uh, blue skies and uh, a lot of sunshine in the future. So I'm very happy and obviously became quite emotional on the floor today uh, when I embraced my son and thanked him uh, for the great leadership he showed. You mentioned uh, Mr. Heinrich taking over at uh, UT Health Science Center San Antonio. Will that be the administrative body for the new medical school in the Valley? Will they be running it when it's built? No, uh, we, we want to be freestanding, but he is going to play a major role in making sure that we, create, we establish the steps necessary to get to that point. Uh, when it's all said and done, see, you know, I, I, I look at the Rio Grande Valley as having an additional health science center uh, established under the U University of Texas umbrella, but it would be freestanding and self-supporting uh, in, in, in that regard. But uh, it can't be done and it won't be done without the support and the help of the UT Health Science Center in San Antonio and the UT Health Science Center in Houston. Let's remember that we have three major components. The, the School of, of Public Health at the University of Texas at Brownsville, the School of Medical Education at, uh, at the RAC in Harlingen, and the School of Research uh, at UT Pan American. So, we're going to expand on those three components. We're going to make sure that, that the impact is, is, is throughout South Texas. And, and when people start looking at in the future and looking back after all this happens, you're going to see a tremendous economic boost you know, for, the, for the area. The question you must be asked a lot now with this legislation, given the, the state's budget crunch, you were asked to produce a bill with a zero fiscal note. So how, what, do, what are your plans to actually pull the money together, get the money together at the state level? What do you do next in, in that regard? Well, the bill guarantees that, that no money will be spent from the general fund, you know, to, to, to create a medical school, but it doesn't keep the system from being able to address those needs uh, that have to take place um, in, in creating more, hopefully by the, by the end of this, this session, we'll have money in there to, to create more residencies in our area of this, uh, at the RAC in Harlingen. Um, but there's no, no reason why the system itself, uh, with the help of the UT Board of Regents, can continue to address the financial needs of the RAC and bring it along Remember, we have to go through uh, the accreditation process. Uh, we need to, a lot of planning and preparing has to take place in the next six years. So I, I think six years is, is ample time for us to get ready. And it's really not a long period of time. I think it's short, short term. When we've spoken before about this, you've said it's probably going to cost $100 million or more. D does that mean the legislature has to find $100 million, or do you, does that include money that you would pull in from outside sources? Well, like, like any other university, uh, there are a lot of contributions and donations that take place, a lot of donors. But at the same time, uh, a lot of the funding requires us to have to go to the general fund. Uh, uh, in the budget, 
uh, we'll see when we come to that to that uh, financial or funding need. We'll see exactly how we approach this. But I suspect that many people want to see this uh, succeed, and that we're going to probably um, under the direction of a new president at, uh, at this medical school. Um, see a lot of major contributions take place uh, from the, the uh, private sector as well. In working on this legislation all these years, have you ever felt that the legislature is pushing hard for this, all the, the delegation is united, the city of Harlingen is united, but have you ever got a sense that the medical community in the valley ha could have done more? Well, I've had a series of calls from the local leadership, the mayor of Harlingen, uh, the commission, uh, and all the elected officials. Along with the medical community, we've had some calls from doctors in, in, in the Valley who fully support the creation of a four-year medical school. I, I, I can't thank them enough because obviously that's also part of, a, part of the component that needs to take place in order for everything to come into place. You need leadership at the local level, you need uh, professional input uh, from the medical community, and uh, we have that. So at this point, I can say that uh, we have everything except the medical school and the money needed to establish one, which is, which is good because we need that period of time, as I mentioned, to go through the planning uh, process, to go through the accreditation process. So at this point, I can't think of anything that's lacking because uh, everybody's very supportive and everybody's ready to take part in, in making sure this succeeds. Well, we need to sell, you know, the, the, the medical school and the economic benefit that it will bring to the Valley. Uh, obviously, all we have to do is lay out what the Health Science Center in San Antonio has done for that region of the state and the billions of dollars each year. Uh, when, when I start showing our business community specifically what it, what the UT Health Science Center in San Antonio has meant for that region, uh, I, I think that we're going to see a lot of people step up to the plate and support our efforts as well. We don't have, unfortunately, the big corporations that you find here in Houston or Dallas, but if, even once people know that there's a medical school that's gonna be built in the Valley, now you're gonna see a lot of these corporations move to the Valley as well. So I think we're gonna have uh, the, the, the financial support at, in the private sector that we're looking for because they themselves stand to, to benefit uh, big, big financial gains for themselves in the future.